According to the press office of PJSC Yakovlev in July, the company is prepared to restart the development of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, or VTOL, upon request from the Russian Ministry of Defense. While approvals may come or not, let's examine the history of the Soviet vertical takeoff fighter aircraft developments. We will also speculate about the technology to be used in the new Russian VTOL fighter. Since the latter half of the 20th century, the most noted aviation nations have been creating aircraft that are capable of lifting off and landing on restricted areas of airstrips or aircraft carrier decks while maintaining the speed of a plane. As airplanes developed, they required runways that were longer, more level, and more durable. However, these runways were susceptible to damage from enemy strikes. The United States undertook research on turboprop and jet VTOL aircraft for the Navy following World War II. The Convair XFY-1, a one-seat tailless aircraft with two counter-rotating propellers, was introduced to the heavens in April 1954. Standing on its tail on wheels at the wingtips and tail fins, it took off and landed vertically. Despite the completion of numerous test flights, it was never put into mass production. The Ryan X-13 Verjet jet aircraft, which was developed for the U.S. Air Force, was equipped with no landing gear. Instead, it relied on a hook and a specially designed platform for vertical descent, which was both dangerous and difficult. The experimental aircraft Turbolet was developed by Soviet designers in the 1950s to resolve the challenges associated with vertical takeoff and landing. Test flights were initiated in 1956 by test pilot Yuri Garneyev. A vertically mounted jet engine and a mass of 2.3 tons provided sufficient fuel for a 10-minute flight. Low aerodynamic control efficacy was achieved through the use of gas jet controls to facilitate takeoff and landing. In 1958, Turbolet captivated spectators at an aviation exhibition in Tushino by hovering and rotating in midair. The data from the Turbolet trials was used in Soviet VTOL aircraft and even in the space program to develop re-entry vehicles for airless environments. The Hawker P-1127, a British aircraft that served as a precursor to the Harrier family, made its inaugural flight in 1960. In 1964, the Soviet Yak-36 was introduced, featuring automated control, an emergency ejection system, and two engines with pivoting nozzles for vertical takeoff. This aircraft garnered substantial interest at the Domodedovo Aviation Show in 1976. The Yak-38, the Soviet Union's first serially produced VTOL aircraft, was developed as a result of the experience acquired. It commenced operations in 1977, two years prior to the British Sea Harrier, featuring two lift engines and a main engine with pivoting nozzles for vertical propulsion, the Yak-38 was equipped with an advanced emergency ejection system that automatically forced ejection through the canopy glass. In service, this system demonstrated exceptional dependability. The Falklands conflict between Argentina and the UK in 1982 saw the use of the British Harrier and Sea Harrier in reconnaissance and the use of both guided and unguided munitions. Despite this, four out of 14 aircraft were lost. The Yak-38 was also subjected to combat trials in Afghanistan from 1979 to 1989, where it was able to carry a maximum payload by using shortened takeoffs. The first Soviet aircraft to land on a naval platform was a Yak-38, which made its debut in 1972 on the aircraft carrier Moskva. The Yak-141, the world's first supersonic VTOL, was initiated in 1974, 20 years before its U.S. counterpart. It successfully managed engines of various varieties, resulting in a unified control system for vertical and short takeoff modes. The Yak-141 was unable to achieve mass production in the 1990s as a result of funding issues, despite having set 12 world records by 1987. There has been speculation regarding the possibility of design plagiarism due to the similarities between the Yak-141's nozzle and that of the American F-35B VTOL version. Nevertheless, PJSC Yakovlev refutes these allegations, asserting that Lockheed Martin expressed interest in collaborating in 1992. However, no contract was signed and no technical documentation was exchanged. The Yak-141's fan-driven system is structurally distinct from that of the F-35B, as it features dual-lift engines. In 2017, 
Yuri Borisov, who was then the Deputy Minister of Defense, suggested that Russia was contemplating the development of a new VTOL design for a future aircraft carrier. This initiative would involve the development of a new aircraft, rather than the modification of an existing design, in order to continue the Yakovlev legacy. Since 2019, the Siberian Aviation Research Institute has been conducting research on short takeoff aircraft using distributed electric motors to increase lift. This work has the potential to facilitate the development of a civilian certified model. PJSC Yakovlev recalls that its pioneering work on VTOL aircraft, which dates back to the late 1950s, exemplifies a high level of achievement, occasionally surpassing global standards. They are prepared to recommence VTOL development if the Ministry of Defense directs them, given the progress made in aviation technology. Now, do you think Russia should make a VTOL aircraft? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership of our channel to encourage us.